Hillary, happy birthday. I just wanted to give you something to celebrate. Wow, Lola, this is such a beautiful gift. Well, I know how much you like gourmet chocolate. Where did you find this kind of gift in England? I can't tell you. It's a secret. No, really. I'd like to know where I could shop for presents for my friends and stuff. Okay, well, I went to Mimsy's Whimsies. Where? Mimsy's Whimsies. Huh? Mimsy's Whimsies. Where the heck is that? It's a new store that just opened on Main Street next to Subway. Cool beans. Speaking of beans, there's a coffee bar there too. Let's go. I'll buy you a cup. Shop at Mimsy's Whimsies at 105 South Main Street in downtown England, Arkansas. Coach, we mentioned we're talking about some defense and injuries. Uh, before the break, you mentioned the kickoff being deep and that being a field position weapon for you. That that really becomes more of a factor if your defense is very tight and, and very staunch. How is your defense this year? Right now, it's like I said, it, it's it's a learning curve. I believe in the defense. Us as a coaching staff believe in the defense. Right now, what we're trying to do is it's it's it's. I think it's a hard sell for the kids. It's it's complicated. I'm not going to lie. It's a tough defense to learn. The defense I brought in last year, it was a complicated defense, but it was it was a lot easier to learn than this. It's uh the bear defense, it's just complicated. It it's it's not so much a lot of thinking, it's a lot more of looking across on the offensive side of the ball, recognizing what the formations are and getting lined up to it. And I think that was our, that was our biggest problem last night. We had a hard time coming off the ball last night. Carlisle pushed us around, you know, all, all over the place. You know, our corners didn't step up when they needed to. Our linebackers didn't step up and make the tackle on the outside. It was, uh, but, you know, in defense, it's 90% alignment. If you're lined up the right way, you know where to go. You're going to make the play. And uh, I just don't think we lined up very well last night. Defense is, a lot of it is based on conditioning and being able to maintain that high level of intensity and get where you need to be when you need to be there, not just physically but mentally conditioned as well. How is the condition of this team right now? Usually, in a team this small, you will see the conditioning kick in after the third game. Right now, we're out of shape. I'm not going to lie. You know, we had one, two, three kids, four kids cramp up last night, and it was a cool night. And it wasn't blazing hot out there. Right now, we're not very much. We're not, we're not in shape very much. I, we, we, need to, we need to get back on the field and start running. They need to get some wind about them, and they need to step up. And that's what we, we discussed with them last night on the field. Because, you know, our main concern right now is that y'all are out of shape. You know, after the second quarter, you know, Carlisle's still running around with their heads up, and they're moving around. I don't think they had one kid cramp up, at least not from where I was standing. You know, we had kids going down left and right. And that's, that's something we're going uh, to take care of this Monday. You mentioned you had some go down. Any serious injuries, or are these guys mainly, like you indicated, just cramps, and we'll get right back at it in practice? We had, uh, you know, Demarcus Bunch went down in the second half with what we thought was a serious ankle injury. You know, it wasn't your basic cramp that we had seen throughout the night. Uh, they took him back to the field house. He iced it down, and from what I understood, he was on the sideline at the end of the game. So I, I think it was just, I just think he got scared. I think he kind of twisted his ankle, got, got a little bit scared, mm -hmm. and uh, which kids will do. But I, I, I think it'll be all right. You know, we haven't, he, you know, after he left uh, last night, he wasn't complaining about any pain in his ankle. So Good. I think it'll be okay. Good. Good to hear. Well, this is your second year here at England, and lo and behold, you get thrown into a whole new conference setup. It makes it tough to evaluate the teams that, that are in the conference. But who do you project to be one of the toughest in-conference foes that the Lions will face this year? Uh, well, the first name that's on everybody's mind is uh, Harding Academy. You know, they went out and beat Pocahontas last night, apparently. You know, they're, they're, they're disciplined. You know, they, they, have a deep, they have a good offense, they have good athletes, they don't have the best speed in the world, but they make up for it by running good routes. You know, it's kind of like the, you know, the Plastic Academy mentality. They don't have the best athletes in the world, but if you ever watch them play, they never stop running until that whistle blows. Mm -hmm. If their receivers are out there, they're going to get open. It's just a matter of time before the quarterback hits them. Uh, Mayflower, tons of athletes all over the field. You know, I, th I think that'll be number one, number one and two. When those two play, that'll probably decide who'll be the conference champion. Uh, Barton won last night, beat Palestine Wheatley. You know, Barton will always be tough. They just have athletes all over the place. Mm -hmm. I know they've got a new coach. Uh, they've got a lot new. I heard they've got over 40 players out. Numbers don't mean nothing unless they can play. Brinkley beat Car Clarendon last night, which, you know, we didn't, in all honesty, we didn't, you know, we thought Brinkley uh, would be down this year. And I, I don't know how Car Clarendon is, but Brinkley comes out in the first game and wins. You know, that's, uh, they must have something 
going right over there. Riverview played Mark Tree and beat them by three points, you know. Riverview, I look at as a sleeper. First-year program. Exactly. They got they have a lot of kids out. Yep. Pulling some kids from Searcy High uh, and, the, and the surrounding areas. Uh, I think Riverview will be pretty decent. You know, they've, they've got a good coaching staff. So I think they'll, they, that, that'll, be, that'll be the last game of the season. That, that won't be too bad. Rosebud, apparently having some problems. Uh, I, from what I understand, they've got a lot of numbers out. But from, from what I've been told, they didn't fare too well in their scrimmage uh, against Western Yale. Episcopal got mm-hmm. drubbed by a smack over last night, which wow. actually really surprised me. You know, wow. I, I thought Episcopal would be a lot better this year, and I knew Smackover was losing some players. But Smackover is not just a – you want to talk about a beast of a conference. <laughs> um, so that for them to come out and whip Episcopal like they did, that's going to be a big confidence booster for them. You know, I know Episcopal lost some kids last year, but I, from what I'd heard, they picked up a few too. But I don't know. We'll see what <laughs> happens when we play them. I look at Harding Academy, their Mayflower. And believe it or not, after that, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a coin flip. Yeah. Like third and fourth spot. It's going to be the team. It's it's going to be the one who comes out with four wins because I think everybody on down the line is going to have anywhere from two to four wins. It's going you know, each game's going to be huge at that point. Huge. Yeah. And right now, the unknown, as you mentioned, Riverview first year programs can be kind of risky simply because there's so much intensity by the crowd that is there. They want their program to get off to a great start, so they throw in their support 110 percent. How much is crowd participation felt by the team, and how important is that for the team to know that they have the backing in the crowd? I think it's huge. When the kids know people are behind them, when they hear them cheering for them, when they go nuts for a touchdown, when we had fireworks going off, they fed off of it. After that first touchdown last night, I haven't seen these kids that fired up in a long time. And they came out and they scored another touchdown. And then when Carlisle goes down and scores, the air was taken out of the ball a little bit. You could see the crowd kind of deflate a little bit. And come out second half, we had nothing. You know, there was, you know, you could hear crickets off in the field. So it's, it's huge. You know, every team feeds off of support. And these kids need as much support as anybody else right now for this program to get to where it needs to be. Your next opponent on the list, another rivalry neighbor, Hazen, right down the road. What are some of the keys to that game? Well, we need to correct what we didn't do last night. We need to shore up. We need to tighten up in a lot of areas. Uh, we, need to, we need to get our conditioning down. We need to cut out the mental mistakes, the penalties, the uh, just the, the stuff that what it's all about. When you know when we call a play and somebody runs the wrong route, makes the wrong block. It's not physical, it's mental. It's all mental. And that's what we need to tighten up is our, our, our mental stability right now because if we block everything right, if we cut out the penalties, if we run the right routes, if we run our right motions, we were in that game all night last night. And just mentally, we, we broke down way too early. Well, Coach, we're going to see it next week if some of those improvements come to fruition. And I appreciate you spending time with us today, and best of luck at Hazen. Thank you very much. Appreciate you having me. You've been listening to Pride Performance, the England Lions football coaches show with Coach Mike Morrison. 